favorite, your favorite NCLEX programming ever. This is Monday Motivation and Let's Talk NCLEX. So you come here uh, and you join the Remar nurses and we begin your week off on the right footing. Um, hey, come on in, welcome, welcome. I trust you all had a wonderful uh, weekend as I did. And I just, I'm just glad to be back here. If you don't know who I am, I happen to be the number one NCLEX instructor on the planet. My name is Regina Callion, and I work here at Remar Review, where we love our nursing students. We love you guys, we really do. Um, a great program for you, as always. We're going to be, of course, serving you your motivation, of course, giving you the NCLEX topics you want to make sure that you know. You want to make sure that you're contributing to your nursing study groups, that you're not just showing up without information. It's good to be the one with the resources. It's good to be the one with the resources. So our subject from motivation this week is the road less traveled. Oh, the road less traveled. You guys don't know. I was feeling that last week. I was feeling that around Wednesday, Thursday. And I said to myself, Oh man, how can I impart this to the Remar nurses? I, I gotta get started with this though. I know, I know you guys have heard about this. I gotta, I gotta get started with this. So let me show you guys. Just everybody that's coming in, hello from all over. Hello from all over. Monday motivation, Remar family. Check this out. Do you guys know this lady? She has been like the talk of the nursing profession all weekend. Um, this is Senator Maureen Walsh. And uh, Senator Walsh, you know, I'm just trying in my mind to, I'm trying to wrap my mind around what her intentions were this week. Um, so if you don't know about her, she has become infamous for making one statement that um, <laughs> stereotypes nurses, right? Um, and just a little background, she was proposing a bill that would actually, a great, I mean, a great bill started off, a great bill where it would mandate hospitals to have adequate staffing for nurses to take appropriate lunch breaks, bathroom breaks, for nurses to secure the breaks that they deserve. However, however, she uh, qualified, she qualified the types of nurses that needed these breaks <laughs> by saying, you know, nurses in critical access centers, critical access hospitals, should not be the ones really getting these breaks. And so if you if you think about um, the critical access center or hospital, what they are are their locations that the federal government has put in place to make sure that people in rural areas, people in rural areas get access to um, the medical needs that they have. And so, yes, these are little outposts that people in rural communities can go to to receive treatment. Her whole thing was um, these nurses here, they don't have a lot of patients and they have ample time where you should not be um, bringing in additional staff to provide these types of nurses their, their, their breaks. They don't have the need for breaks because they have all this free time. And she, you know, she made a reference that the nurses there spend a lot of their time playing cards. And when she said it, it was like, I don't know when stuff comes out of your mouth and you realize that like, I shouldn't have said that. I don't know if that was ex her experience, but when those words came out of her mouth, every nurse, Every nurse in this country considered it like a shot fired at them. And so she has been like, she has been, um, I don't know. I mean, she has just been <laughs> demolished by the nursing community in terms of uh, how dare her? Like, who does she think, who does she think she is to say that us nurses on the front line have time to play cards. I, you know, 
in all of my travels and in all you know of the hospitals I've worked at, you guys know like I've been licensed in five different states. I have never once seen any nurse, any nurse playing cards, let alone, let alone, you know, any kind of recreational game, not cards, not Twister, not Monopoly. I mean, nurses just do not have the time to do that. And even when, you know, by God's grace, we get additional time or free time, we're certainly not about to strike up a game of spades. We don't have, you, you never know what's coming through the door. And so this lady didn't realize that nurses, this lady didn't realize that nurses, you know, we're known for eating our young. We will eat our own young. So um, you have no idea what we would do to an outsider. <laughs> oh man, I don't know why she would say that, but it made me think, you know, how um, professions get these negative stereotypes. And I'm not saying that, you know, she didn't have a negative experience at a critical access hospital. Maybe she did. Maybe she did see a nurse playing cards. I'm, I mean, because things happen. So maybe Senator Walsh saw a nurse playing cards and she decided to generalize, generalize every nurse that worked at that sort of location. It's just a, mm, and so I thought, I thought to myself, well, man, well, maybe that's how people say police officers eat donuts. You know what I mean? Or women don't, you know, take their jobs as serious as men or housewives, house mothers just sit around watching TV all day. It's literally like flippant statements like that, that can perpetuate, perpetuate a negative stereotype for thousands and thousands of years about a people or a group of people. So how careful how careful do we need to be about the things that come out of our mouths about other people? Okay, other people, because this woman, she attacked a profession that she very well may need. I mean, can you imagine? There's, there's two, there's two pr professions I'm not going to fool with. I am not going to fool with, I'm, listen, I'm not gonna fool with postal workers because y'all know, you just don't mess with your post office people, right? I'm just not fooling with postal workers. I, you know, my mailman, sometimes I get my mail and it's wet. Sometimes he leaves, you know, he doesn't take the mail he's supposed to take, but you think I'm going to mess with him? No, because you know what? I need my mail. And, you know, so there are just professions that you just, you just don't attack. And nurses, especially if you yourself may need nursing care at any point, why would you attack nurses? <laughs> it just blows my mind. But I wanted to address it because you know what? Um, as nurses, we have to have very thick skin and we have to be able to take criticism um, because the job that we, the job that we do actually can be very thankless. And it's obvious that um, there is a misperception about what nurses actually do. So how do we change that? How do we change that conversation? How do we change that dialogue? You know, if you get an opportunity or you're asked about your opinion on this, um, you can address that there's a real problem. Like there is a real problem. And if you think about it historically in this country, there was a time when nurses were actually um, encouraged to be phased out. Remember, that's why there's such a nursing crisis now, because nurses during the 70s, nurses were considered uh, you could take them or leave them. You could take them or leave them. Um, and now, you know, there's a there is um, there is a realization that the nursing function is irreplaceable in a hospital. So when you think about the backbones of these healthcare organizations, guess guess who's the backbone? It's us. It's us. So Senator Walsh, you know what? I did want to tell her that she did have some truth about Remar nurses. Like there, there are some truth about us in playing cards because I see a lot of you guys with cards actually, but you know what? They're flash cards. So here at Remar, we do play cards, but they just happen to be flash cards and the information on them will save uh, Senator Walsh's life or anybody else that needs access to medical care. So that's my hobby horse on her. I'm gonna get off of it. And I'm just going to encourage, encourage 
everyone out there to watch what comes out of your mouth because I read a statement where she says, oh, she really regrets. She really regrets saying that nurses play cards. So getting back to our Monday motivation, thank you guys for segmenting, <laughs> segmenting. Oh, let's talk in Clex today with that. Um, we are, as you guys know, we're going to announce another winner this week um, for our pay for NCLEX. Oh, yes, we are paying for NCLEX right here at Remar Review. And I, I was happy because as I was picking the winner, as I was picking the winner for this week, I saw that the winner from a couple weeks ago sent us an email and said, hey, I paid for my NCLEX. I want to cash in on that reimbursement. So we will be announcing another winner at the end of uh, Let's Talk NCLEX. I am also happy to share a testimonial um, from Nurse Delva, USRN, hashtag Remar Nurses. Let me read you guys. Let me read you guys this, okay? Um, With God, everything is possible, she says. The victory belongs to him. I didn't do it myself, but the Lord did it. I graduated nursing school in Haiti in 2014. Wow. I took NCLEX Thursday, April 18th, 2019 for the very first time. And I found out that I passed with 80, I'm sorry, with 78 questions, 78 questions. Words can't explain how I feel right now. I am so very grateful for Regina and Mark. Remar products is amazing and it works. I use everything Remar, the Facebook Lives, hey. And um, when finally I was able to pay, I brought the DVD package. Then um, with the question bank book and the five star quick facts where um, I purchased them too. I did the boot camp. I did scary topics. Okay, listen, I did Black Friday, seven days of NCLEX. I even did the class she did before I knew about Remar, the math session, Remar University 2018. Pow. Oh, my goodness. I forget how much stuff I put out. So congratulations on your new license, USRN. I love that. She mentioned Remar Nurse University is coming Remar Nurse University is coming. Everybody watching this broadcast should have signed up for this event. There is no excuse to why you don't have your your, your material. And again, this is a free online class. So when I say that if you've been following Remar but have decided not to do this month-long free NCLEX review, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense because the information is going to be so helpful before you test for NCLEX. The information is going to be is going to be so profound. It's going to answer a lot of the questions that you probably are thinking yourself. So I'm just going to put this out there. Yes, the NCLEX review is free. Okay. Yes, the NCLEX review is free. But honestly, you guys need to go ahead and get the bundle package. And the reason why I'm saying this is because for for just $25 you get your workbook okay this workbook this workbook let me make let me make myself big. <laughs> one second here all right so this workbook is going to be critical for you to have to experience Remar Nurse University the the most um i don't know i the, the best way all right it's going to elevate your experience. I was um, preparing for my Atlanta class this morning and in Atlanta, that's the second location I'm going to, I'm doing prioritization. And so I was going through the prioritization scenarios and I took all of these notes in addition to what was already here. Show that Mark, right? I took all of these notes in addition to what was already in the book. And so, I thought to myself, if somebody doesn't have this workbook, they're going to have the responsibility of trying to write down all of the things that I have in here, plus their own notes. I don't think I don't think you're going to be able to um, learn. I I think you'll I think you'll be um, trying to just write, you know, ferociously and you're going to miss the things that I say. 
that are going to be very important for you. So get the workbook, please, everybody. Um, and no, this is not a PDF that we are going to be um, emailing you. You need to get it now so that by the time the class comes, you're able to get started right away. And for $25, you don't only just get the workbook, you get your ticket if you're coming, um, which will give you like priority seating. You can bring it to the location. And then you also, of course, get the t-shirt, which LeBron and Jessica talked about when they did the pre-live um, you know, video. This t-shirt, when you wear it, then we know that you have priority seating, you get priority access to the event. These are things that I think are going to be um, helpful to you to make sure that you are getting the experience that we desire for you to be. So I'm encouraging you guys, I'm gonna do another informational session about this because this event is something that you do not want to skip out. And even if you can't come to the cities, you can still watch it online, which makes it even more incredible. All right. We've never done something like this before. Um, I have never gone over new subjects. Like usually when I do um, RNU, it's the stuff from the self-study package. So this is like an advanced study session for me. And so I've been really preparing. Like I said, I was taking notes for the Atlanta class. Um, I did Chicago uh, last week. So I'm at Atlanta. I got I to gotta get moving. But the information is, is new um, and it's beneficial. So again, 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 sign up for Remar Nurse University. Get the workbook. OK, get the workbook because you won't be able to, um, you won't even be able to share it, okay? Um, so super excited. If you have signed up for it already and you didn't opt in for the workbook, you're able to still go back and purchase that workbook. Also, 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 um, we're just sending one workbook to you. So um, make sure that you have yours and you get started doing the pre-class questions, all right? So thank you guys uh, for that. But again, I'll be doing a full informational session on Remar Nurse University. Oh, you get the pen too. I forgot about that. Um, so their t-shirts are coming. Workbooks are coming out to you guys as you order them. Um, even if you're still waiting, today is Monday. So we are putting things out uh, that came in over the weekend. So just be patient with us. The most important thing is that you get your workbook before May the 6th the first day of class, the first day of class. So I see people are like, oh my goodness, I have to get mine. Some people, um, how do I get it? So the the schedule, okay. So again, just to schedule really quickly, um, uh, Remar Nurse University is taking place every Monday night in May, every Monday night in May, starting at 7 p.m., starting at 7 p.m. So. Um, my first Monday, May the 6th, I will be in Chicago. I will be in Chicago. So if you signed up for that event, you got the details of where it is. We will start 7 p.m. Chicago time. All right, 7 p.m. Chicago time. I am taking myself and Team Remar the next week. Um, we're going to Atlanta, and that is going to be May the 13th. May the 13th, I'm going to Atlanta and the class there will begin at 7 p.m. Oh, the very next week, May the 20th. Thank you, Mark, because he's helping me. Um, May the 20th, I'm going to Los Angeles, California. I will be on the West Coast, and I will be um, eating in and out burgers, I'm sure. <laughs> but also, I will be doing a class on Monday, May the 20th starting at 7 p.m. So all our East Coasters, we have to make sure that at 10 10, we are ready to go. And then I am moving on to myself. I'm be going to uh, New York next. And I'll be spending May the 27th there. That's Memorial Day weekend. Uh-huh. I'm expecting that class to be huge. It's going to be packed and powerful. Oof, New York. And then I am finally, finally ending Remar Nurse University. And remember, you can watch all of this online. Okay, you can watch all of this online. I'll be going to, I'm glad you got your, I'm glad you got your shirt. Um, I, I will be ending in Miami, which is June the 3rd, June the 3rd, I'll be ending in Miami and I will, um, be doing my final exam and also, um, yes, final exam in Miami, seven o'clock Eastern time. I'll be back on my Eastern time. And it's going to be great. It's going to be great. So again, if you can't make the cities, you can still have your workbook. 
watch online. But if you come to the live event, I'm telling you, it's going to be a blast. And if you want to know what I'll be talking about, open your workbook up and you will be able to see the table of contents where Mark is right here, which tells you the schedule and the location and the time. So really cool stuff. I'm telling you, this workbook is super helpful to those of you who choose to get it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going East Coast, West Coast, everywhere. And I'm excited about it. Remarners University, take advantage of it. Okay, so with that being said, let's get into our Monday motivation. We are talking about the road, the road less traveled, the road less traveled. Okay, now there, there are things, there are, there are two things about taking the road less traveled. And I know we know as a principal, when you take the road less traveled, you're, you're choosing to do something that is not very popular. When you're relating it to your NCLEX journey, especially for my people who are repeat test takers, what you're choosing to do is push back against failure. You're choosing to get up after you've been kicked down. You're choosing to um, push back against the wall that has you trapped. Like So the road less traveled for really anybody preparing for the NCLEX means that you're at a point of sacrifice and hard work. And that makes it the road less traveled because most people like to live comfortably. Most people like to live without the anxiety of a huge test hanging over their shoulders. And even if they have done it, they wanna do it for a short time. And if it doesn't work out, then they want to get rid of it, right? So there are many people who have taken NCLEX and failed, and they say, I'm never going back to that again. I will find my way in another profession. I'll do social work. I'll be a dental hygienist, but I am not doing nursing or that NCLEX again. And so it is a, it, there is a way out. If you don't want to work hard, if you don't want to sacrifice, you can certainly find the door to exit stage left. However, when you choose to take the road less traveled, and this is what I had to tell myself last week, when you choose to take the road less traveled, you have to accept the responsibilities of walking that road. And many a times it is going to be very difficult to continue down a path that will ultimately lead to um, a higher life. I mean, really, really the end result of your nursing license puts you in a totally different position, puts you in a totally different position, position profession-wise, uh, financially, the responsibility that, um, that comes with it. And so the road there prepares you for the success that you will have. It gives you the character for the success that you will have. But the things that I have to remember um, are this. Um, when you're taking the road less traveled, you very well may end up alone. And that's sometimes the difficult part of taking the journey that I'm on is that I don't have I don't have a lot of social friends. I just don't. Um, and it could be because I, I really don't have time. It could be because I'm choosing to surround myself around people who are like minded. And if it's already the road less traveled, then I'm going to have to find people that have the same kind of goals. And so it's difficult when you're going through something and you find yourself alone doing it, alone doing it. So, I mean, I thank God I bless the Lord for Mark um, because um, not only is he my husband, he's my best friend. And he has the same sort of, of mindset as me in terms of, you know, what is my responsibility to God? What is the ministry that I'm working on? Um, so things like that. But for you, you guys may find that you have very little friends right now. You have very little people to um, encourage and support you during this time. People don't get it. People don't understand why, you know, you're, you're saying this is difficult because for them, it's just like, Oh, well, this is just another test. All you have to do is study. But for us, it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. And so 
I thought about the loneliness sometimes that you can experience. And it brought me back to the Remar Nurse study group where I, I see very frequently people posting, hey, I live in, you know, I live in Nantucket. Is there anybody studying for NCLEX? Is there anybody just starting the six week challenge? And sometimes there are no responses. Like sometimes literally not one response comment. So you guys that are coming to Remar Nurse University um, in the live cities, you have an opportunity to leave with a new friend who is studying for NCLEX just like you. I mean, literally there'll be hundreds of people in one place right where you are. Take advantage of it. Network with those people there. And the great thing about the Remar Nurse community, even now, there's 400 people. There's 400 people watching, interested in studying um, and passing NCLEX. So when you're on the road less traveled, don't think it a strange thing that you, you know, you have to encourage yourself along the way. All right. So that's just something for us to remember. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard walking this road. But when you get to where you're going to be, you're going to find that um, like like nurse, uh, like a nurse Delva said today, like she couldn't have done it without the Lord, like her and the Lord, like literally you owe the credit to yourself because of the hard work that you put in. You're going to get the results based of based off the work that you put in and that God gave you a mind to do it. Right. Um, the second thing about the road less traveled that I want you guys to remember this week as you are pursuing your goal of passing NCLEX is that number two, you will be left with your biggest competition because there won't be anyone around. Um, but the bad thing about it is that you are your biggest competition. And I that speaks directly to me because I am only going to be as good as the discipline I have. I'm only going to be as good as the, the hard work that I put in yesterday. So I can say all that I want. I can say all that I want. Yeah, Regina, you're going to be the number one NCLEX instructor in the world, girl. You doing it. You doing it, girl. You doing it. But my actions, my actions have me not studying, have me sleeping in, have me eating all kinds of junk all the time. Like my actions are not going to lead me to success, right? So you have to be careful because you can pump yourself up and you can talk yourself into, you know, thinking that you're doing all of this and all that. But in reality, you're really not. You're really not. And because you're left with just yourself, you don't really have accountability. Like there's nobody calling me talking about, hey, did you get your PowerPoint for Remar Nurse University done? Hey, did you, you know, do you have your hotel in Los Angeles? Do you have, nobody's, nobody's really, well, Mark is doing it, but like nobody really like from a social circle is doing that for me. I have to be responsible. I'm my own biggest competition. And maybe for some of you guys, that's not your issue. Like you don't have the positive self-talk. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you're the one tearing yourself down every day and saying, you don't have time for this. You know, this is not what you're supposed to do. Maybe your, maybe your thing is that you want to do those things, but your own conversations with yourself are depressing. You know, you're not good enough. You know, some people literally, you know, they'll, it's, it's so, it's so, um, it's so interesting. Sometimes when I go to a live class, people will stand in line for a long time to be able to meet me and greet me, which is which is great. But when they meet me, when they speak to me, the first thing out of their mouth is, Regina, you know, I'm not I'm not pretty like you. You know what I mean? Like things you wouldn't ever expect to hear. You know, I just, I don't have the confidence or I hate the way I look. I want to take a picture with you, but I don't want to be in the picture. I don't want to see myself in the picture. And it's literally, it's literally, um, uh, I don't even know how to say it. Like it's kind of heartbreaking because it's like you live with those thoughts about yourself. So when you 
get in a position to put yourself out there or try to go for the gold, you know, in your nursing career, you don't have the confidence in yourself. And so if that's you today, know that it's something that you can change. It's something that you can practice. Um, you can practice saying positive things about your own self. Um, because you have to be able to encourage yourself on this journey. It's hard enough. It's hard enough that you probably won't have a lot of friends. It's hard enough that you're fighting against your biggest competition, which is yourself. But the least you can do, the least you can do is be nice to yourself along the way. You don't have to be you don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the most outgoing. You don't have to be the best looking. Like I guarantee you, however great you look, there's somebody that looks better than you out there, period. So let's just acknowledge it and let's just be happy with what we have. Um, and I guess this is more for the ladies. And I'm sorry, guys, if you're watching. But we as women, we have to have a positive self-image because we can spend like a lot of time focused on our external looks, but the inside is bad. You know, when I was 18 years old, I had a problem with my body. Like I just, I didn't like my body. I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't like how tall I was. Now at my age, I wish I had that body at 18. You know what I mean? Like I've had two children. It's been a long life. So um, thinking about future wise, it's like, our younger selves, our younger selves, we have to continue to be nice as we grow. We have to be embracing every change. Okay, so, oh my goodness. I mean, just being on the road less traveled, I'm just keeping it real with you guys, it can be a challenge. So the way that we think about it during the traveling, during the journey, will ultimately, ex it will change the way we experience the process. It won't be easy, but you know what? You're going to learn a lot, especially if you're here, because I'm going to push you to do more and greater things than what you see me doing. I know that you guys have the potential to do it, okay? Yes, the battle of the mind. I like that, Janetta. I like that. Um, speak positive to yourself. I mean, there are some Reamer nurses out there that are incredibly wise and are great resources. So, I like this. Um, it says here, difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. Difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. Um, one of the things I'm really grateful for is our podcast because if you miss this, um, if you miss this segment, you can always go to Remar Nurse Radio and listen to the podcast. So we'll be actually uploading this one today and then, or no, we'll be uploading the one next week, I think today. And then this one will upload it on Thursday. All right. So Remar Nurse Radio um, is the podcast where you can get your Monday motivation if you missed it. You know what? Hi, Kathy from Seattle. It's cool. It's cool. Um, are you guys ready? Are you ready for your NCLEX questions? Monday motivation has been served. You're on the road, let's travel, and that's all right. Let's get into, let's get into our NCLEX questions. You'll like them. Question number one, question number one. At the end of the shift, the nurse is ready to leave, but has not been relieved by the oncoming shift nurse. The nurse's responsibility to continue to provide care for clients is part of the, number one, critical thinking, two, code of ethics, three, quality assurance, or four, actus reus. So we have at the end of the shift, the nurse is ready to leave, but she has not been relieved, okay? by the oncoming shift nurse. The nurse's responsibility to continue to provide care for the patient mm -hmm, is part of the nurse's number one, critical thinking, two, code of ethics, three, quality assurance, four, actus reus. I see the answers coming in. Share this video. Thank you guys for participating. You guys are on it today. The correct answer, 
uh -huh, is the nurse's code of ethics. And the nurse's code of ethics is great um, because it does promote the advocation and protection for your patients. One of the things that I'm going to be talking about during Remarkers University is our ethical practice. Everything we do um, in nursing is built on the code of ethics. And so you have to know it for your exam. I've been getting so many questions on the different parts of ethics that um, you know you just need to be solid on. So I've been having a great time studying it, and I think that's where this question came from. Um, actus reus is just a Latin term for a guilty act if you didn't know what that is. Hey, number two, for a client who has a percutaneous endoscopic gastronomy, all right, tube, which is pet tube, um, which position should a client be in for feeding? So we are we are going to another topic. Do you know what position your client needs to be in when they have a peg tube? All right, number one, Fowler's with the head flat. Mm -hmm. Two, supine with head not elevated. Three, Fowler's position with the head flexed. Four, supine with the head at least 30 degrees elevation. Yep. Which one would you guys say it was? What's the most important? What is the most important? Mm -hmm. What is the most important part of this whole thing? <laughs> Oh, we are, we are moving. Oh, what's the, I like, I like the, um, I like the continuity. I like the continuity of today. Seems like you guys are all on one accord, which I love. I love that. I love when remarkers come together and we're all on one accord. There's just a few people who are choosing a different answer. Let me, let me reveal the correct answer to you guys. Oh yes. It's as most of you had it supine with the head at least 30 degrees elevation. Mm -hmm. And this will prevent the client from actually aspirating, which is interesting because you don't think about that being an issue. You don't think about that being an issue for somebody with a tube in the stomach, but it, it very well could be. It very well could be. All right, so come on in. We are just getting warmed up. We're ready for question number three. Question number three, you guys are ready. Here we go. The nurse is caring for a client with dementia. The client insists on leaving to go home. Which of the following should the nurse do? Number one, review the orientation board in the client's room. Two, take the client to the lunchroom to interact with other clients. Three, Contact the physician for a sedative medication. Four, provide the client with a glass of apple juice. You have a client with a cognitive impairment, they won't go home, they want to leave. Which is the best for the nurse to do? I bet you guys can get it down to two choices. I bet you can. I bet you can. <laughs> And I see here answers. I see two. I see one. That wasn't the ones I was thinking you guys would get it down to, but I could be wrong. Okay. Um, hmm. What say if you guys? Number one, review the the orientation board in the client's room. Two, take the client to the lunchroom so they can interact. They can see other clients. Three, contact the physician for a sedative medication. Four, provide the client with a glass of orange juice. I, I, I appreciate that question mark. <laughs> I appreciate that question mark. Because sometimes you don't know. You just don't know. Um, come on in. We're talking about a client with dementia here. Let me give you the right answers. I didn't realize how, how time had gotten away from us. It's almost 1 o'clock. The correct answer is, uh-huh, is number one for those of you who, who chose this. Reviewing the orientation board in the client's room makes the most sense, especially when you look at the other ones. I mean, sometimes you can pick the right answer because the other ones just don't make sense. So if you chose two, 
you have a confused client, they want to go home. If you take them to the lunchroom to interact with other clients, they are going to say, this is exactly why I don't want to be here. This is exactly why I need to go home. I'm surrounded by strangers. Nobody in here. I don't know anybody in here. I want to go home. So when you do that, the agitation level of the patient going down or is it going up? Yeah, it's going up. And people with Alzheimer's, I don't know um, if you know this or you have experience working with somebody with Alzheimer's, but they are incredibly strong. I don't know where you get that strength from, but literally I saw a woman with Alzheimer's she picked up this nurse. I mean, like, it was like a movie. Like, she picked two hands. I mean, this woman was like 79 years old. She picked, like, picked her up, pinned her against the wall. The lady couldn't move. When it comes to dealing with patients with Alzheimer's, you have to be strategic with how you treat them. Putting, putting them in the room with clients is only going to, um, is only going to exacerbate their anxiety. Three, contacting the physician for a sedative medication. All right, so this is not going to be the best answer because um, it's considered a form of restraint, okay? And you all know that there are two wonderful types of restraints. What are they, Remar nurses? There are two types of restraints. There are physical restraints and chemical restraints. So if you're requesting for a sedative, um, before some sort of education or reorientation for NCLEX, that's not going to fly, all right? They want you to be safe. They don't want you to harm the patient intentionally. So um, we're, we're not going to go with the restraint right off the bat. And then number four, no, I don't think too many people picked that. Um, they are providing the client with a glass of apple juice, uh, that's just going to uh, distract what what is what the client is asking for, and it may increase agitation. All right. Um, so out of the choices that are there, again, out of the choices that are there, I'm sure um, you know you can think of considerations where people are you know in in the assisted living places, and they say, "Oh, come on, Mr. Jones, let's go into the dining hall. It's time for." lunch and Mr. Jones wants to go home, like they'll, they'll take them to the dining hall. They'll give them graham crackers and milk, you know. But for NCLEX, reorientation is there as an option. So you need to try to reorientate the client, okay? Try it. Try that first, all right? Because everything else kind of ignores what your patient is asking for. So that's not going to be the best choice, okay? All right. Let's move on. Let's do this one here. Here we go. The LPN, we love our LPNs. The licensed practical nurse is reviewing a client's insulin order. Which order needs clarification by the healthcare provider? We're doing some pharmacology here. Number one, Humalog insulin with meals for sliding scale coverage. Mm -hmm. Metformin. 1,000 milligrams per day in divided doses. Three, administer Humulin R 30 minutes prior to meals. Okay. Four, Lantus insulin 15 units BID. BID. Okay. So, 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 so. Which one, which one is the correct answer? Mm hmm I like it. Don't be afraid. I'm, I'm filling the question marks today. The answer is with the question mark. Which insulin order would you question? Mm hmm I like it. Comment, share, like this video. Comment, share, like this video. And if you're listening to the podcast, continue to listen. All right. So the correct answer, a lot of choices are coming through. That is that is OK. You are here to learn. The correct answer is actually you're going to be surprised. It's actually the Lantus, the Lantus insulin, 15 units BID. Uh, usually, usually your long acting insulin 
is prescribed just what once a day yes i know you got it you you knew it you knew it you knew it i knew <laughs> um but usually that insulin is prescribed just once a day is it prescribed in the day or the evening what say if you guys is it prescribed in the day or in the evening mm -hmm. number four yeah number four um this is usually taken at bedtime because the absorption rate is um, so much better at night. Uh, so having to take this medication twice a day, yeah, having to take this medication twice a day would definitely require some clarification. What's going on with the patient where we want to give them this long acting insulin twice a day? Um, not to say that it, it wouldn't be because the physician can order you to give it that way, but you definitely would want some clarification for this. OK, so we've done um, good job. We've we've done questions hodgepodge. Let's see what's next. All right. Mm hmm. Let's see. Oh, let's try this one. OK, here we go. I like this one. Here we go. I am. These questions are not coming from a workbook. These questions are part of our Monday motivation. Let's talk NCLEX. So we have here number five. The charge nurse is making assignments on a pediatric unit. Which client should be assigned to the licensed practical nurse? We have the six year old client diagnosed with acute sepsis. The eight-year-old client diagnosed with systemic inflammation response syndrome. The 10-year-old client diagnosed with poisoning. Number four, the 13-year-old client diagnosed with diabetes mellitus type 1. Who should that LPN see? Who should that LPN be assigned to. This is not select all that apply. All right, so there's just gonna be one answer that's going to be correct. You have a six-year-old, number one is a six-year-old diagnosed with acute sepsis. Two, eight-year-old diagnosed with systemic inflammation response syndrome. Three, the 10-year-old diagnosed with poisoning. Or four, you have a 13-year-old diagnosed with diabetes mellitus type one. Okay. And I got ones and fours, ones and fours, ones and fours for our choices here. The correct answer mm -hmm. is number four. Great job. Number four, um, the 13-year-old client diagnosed with diabetes mellitus type 1 is the most stable patient. So that's who that LPN should be assigned to. The six-year-old client diagnosed with acute sepsis, that patient is going to need some assessment, yes. The eight-year-old diagnosed with um, systemic inflammation response syndrome also is not stable. This is the actual condition. Um, and then three, three, you have a patient who has been poisoned, so you're going to need a rapid assessment very um, frequent assessment, and so the LPN is going to be struggling to probably get the RN to do the assessment, to provide the information. It's going to be a big hassle. Um, so four is going to be the most appropriate patient, the most appropriate patient. Oh, I like that, Amber. What is systemic inflammation response syndrome? Oh my goodness, isn't that a great question? Isn't that a great question, everybody? How will we know what systemic inflammation response syndrome is? How will we know what the definition of that is? What's the best thing for us to do? You, you already know, you already know. Okay, so the one thing that I wanna keep in mind about with the scenario is that, is that, <clears throat> Um, you have the ability, you have the ability um, to be able to assign LPNs patients, right? If you're an RN, you'll be able to assign an LPN a patient. Even sometimes in real life, the patient may be borderline. Um, but when you do that, 
and you choose to give an LPN a task or a patient that's not the most stable, then you have to understand that you are, you'll be responsible for the majority of that patient's care, for the majority of that patient's documentation. So for RNs, so for RNs, it just makes sense that you understand the parameters of the LPN assignment because it, in the end, it takes a lot of stress off of them and it will take a lot of stress off of you as well. All right. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Let's do another one. Here's another one. All right. Um, okay. So here we go. Number six, number six, who should the nurse see first? Who should the nurse see first? All right. Number one, number one, a male client with hypothyroidism, mm -hmm, complaining of chills and dizziness. Okay. All right. Two, a male client with hypothyroidism who needs suctioning. Three, a male client with hypothyroidism who needs a dressing change. Or four, a male client with hypothyroidism complaining, complaining of acute pain. All right. So one of the questions... One of the questions that I got that helped me with Remar Nurse University is somebody said, Regina, how can I do different types of priority questions? I want to be able to learn how to do many different types of priority questions. So for the answer here, everybody has hypothyroidism, right? So we're looking for what? We're looking for the most acute patient, the one with the most severe problem right here. All right, and I see the answers. You guys are doing phenomenal with this. The correct answer is yes. Number two, that patient with hypothyroidism who needs suctioning, who needs to have that suctioning done. And that just insinuates to us that this person has some sort of breathing problem, um, potentially an airway problem. I'm not sure at the point at this point, but the suctioning is going to be the priority over the acute pain, the dizziness, and what was the third one? Um, the dressing change, right? So this is what you will have to um, be able to determine. And I think for the most part, everybody did. Everybody did pretty good. There was just a few. Um, so this is what you'll have to be able to determine who is your acute patient. So for Remar Nurse University, I will be going over a lot of questions like this. However, I have incorporated other types of priorities where there is no airway breathing scenario. Like if somebody has, um, if somebody has uh, what a possible fracture, if somebody has a possible, you know, hemorrhage, if somebody has, you know, you know, another circulation issue, how do we pick the priority circulation issues how because i think sometimes if you understand airway breathing circulation you can always pick out airway but what if you don't have the airway or breathing how do you determine who's your priority then so i have a, a great way for you guys to be able to look at those questions remar nurse university remar nurse university um is where you need to be next month for real for real all right um so Sign up for it right there, Remar Nurse University backslash RNU. Let's do another question, huh? Let's do another question. We have question number seven says, mm, oh, a lot of these. If you're the preceptor nurse, it will start like that maybe. If you're the preceptor nurse, which client should be given to the new graduate RN? Yes. Yes. Here we go. Number one. A client with moderate pain requesting hydromorphone IV for a broken coccyx. A client with end-stage brain cancer with frequent vomiting episodes. Three, a client who has multiple sclerosis and has an infection. Or four, a client who just returned from gastric bypass surgery on a morphine drip. Mm hmm. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Thank you for watching from Africa. I love to visit that continent. I love to. 
So we're talking about here, who should be given to the new graduate RN? Well, you guys know that that RN can do some assessing. So here we go. Number one, is it the client with moderate pain requesting hydromorphone IV for a broken coccyx? Two, a client with end-stage brain cancer with frequent vomiting episodes. Hmm, you can vomit. Nurses can handle that. Three, a client who has MS and has developed an infection. Okay, MS, we know it. And four, a client who has just returned from gastric bypass surgery on a morphine drip, on a morphine drip. Oh, I see. I love this question because it brings out the controversy. It brings out the controversy here. I got fours and ones and twos. I love it. I love it. All right. So the correct answer here is going to be, correct answer here is going to be this one. Let me show you right now. Here it is. All right. Number one. Oh, number one. Okay. So this, the client with moderate pain requesting hydromorphone IV for a broken coccyx is the most stable out of the unstables. Okay. Um, and with the new graduate RN, remember, you have to think about them kind of like you would think about the LPN, but, with, but within the scope of the RN practice, because what the RN, the new graduate RN lacks is experience, experience. So you want to give them the general med surge patient. Like, that's how I look at it. Like, okay, who would be on a general med surge unit? Who would be on a general med surge unit, right? It's a great way to look at this. Thank you. All right. So the, the client with end-stage brain cancer with frequent vomiting episodes is complicated, okay? This patient more than likely will be in a cancer oncology unit. Somebody that understands brain cancer, understands increased intracranial pressure, right? <laughs> I like that. I love that. And Anne says, I think to myself, which client would I want <laughs> as a new RN, right? I like that a lot. Um, so yeah, number two, somebody with end-stage brain cancer, they're going to be on an oncology unit. The new, the new graduate may not have experience with cancer patients. What about this client with multiple sclerosis and they developed an infection? Mm. So they have a neuro condition, right? And, and they're unstable because they have an infection. What is that infection going to do? What, was it, what is that infection going to do with the, the multiple sclerosis? How is it going to make it challenging? How is it going to make it challenging, right, to take care of the patient? So you think about the care that's going to be required for the patient, right? So number four. Number four, a client who just returned from gastric bypass surgery on a morphine IV drip. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Like this is a surgical patient. This is a surgical patient getting IV pain medication. You know, as a new graduate RN, you're going to have to have some experience with post-surgery pain, gastric bypass pain, where should they be feeling the pain? Is it normal? And so I think when you when you look at these questions, when you look at these questions, you really want to pick the best answer. You have somebody here with a broken coccyx. What are they, what are they requesting? The only thing that they're requesting is the only thing that they're requesting is what? Okay. They're requesting pain medication. That's all that they're requesting. So this is your most stable patient. Number two, you have somebody with end-stage brain cancer, frequent vomiting episodes. It's not so much that the patient is vomiting because yes, they could be, they could be vomiting because so if you want to assume that they're getting chemotherapy or something like that, you can assume that they're vomiting because of the chemotherapy, but couldn't it be something else? Like if they have brain cancer, could, um, it, could it have spread that now it's causing them to have a reaction? You know, 
you, you have to anticipate the, the potential complications here. A new nurse would, would be at most likely asking somebody with more experience how to help her with this patient, right? How to help her with this patient. Number three, somebody with multiple sclerosis and has developed an infection, that patient's going to be unstable because we need to know, okay, what kind of infection is it? What, what's expected, what's not expected, right? And then four, you have to know as well, what is the protocol for a patient going through gastric bypass surgery? So um, if you guys, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe with that explanation, you, it can kind of clear, clarify why one is the best answer over the other ones, okay? Why one is the best answer over the other ones, all right? Let me see, do I have another one? Let, let's, let me think. Okay, let's check it, check it out. Yes, okay, perfect. So here we go. This is another who should the nurse see first, okay? And this has to do with pharmacology. So it's great if you've been studying your pharmacology. Who should the nurse see first? A client, just priority question. A client who has just started gentamicin with a temperature of 102. A client complaining of gastric upset who is taking clindamycin? Hmm. A client who has just started ferrosamide along with her vancomycin. Two, a client who is 19 years old and just prescribed telethromycin. Mm -hmm. So who should this nurse see first? Oh, the answers are rolling in. The answers are rolling in. Okay, you got a client. They just started gentamicin with a temperature of 102. Two, a client complaining of gastric upset who is taking clindamycin. Three, a client who has just started ferrosamide along with her vancomycin. Or four, a client who is 19 years old and just prescribed telethromycin. Mm -hmm. Lots of choices here. One and three and one and three is what I see. <laughs> the correct answer. The correct answer. All right. Number three. Yes, the client who has just started for rosamide and along with the vancomycin, taking these two together is no, it, it, no. It's no good. It's no good for your patient, okay? Um, because both of these medications can actually cause damage to the ears and the kidneys when they're given together. So for our um, NCLEX preparation, when you see frozomide and vancomycin together, it's a no-no. All the other patients, you, you are okay with what's happening here. A client who... Um, a client who just started gentamicin with a temperature of 102, well, they're probably taking an uh, antibiotic for an infection. So we would probably want to monitor that temperature um, a little bit later on, but definitely not the priority here. The, comp the client complaining of gas stomach upset, gastric upset, who's taking clindamycin could definitely be a side effect of the medication, um, not lethal in any way. And then you have the 19 year old who was prescribed um, telethromycin. No cause for concern right now about this patient, but number three, you definitely, definitely want to monitor. Yeah, ototoxicity, nephrotoxicity. Got it, got it. Okay, so you guys had a hodgepodge of subjects that we went over today. I hope that you realize that I took it easy on you guys this week. I hope that you realize that. I had a difficult, <laughs> hard Monday motivation topic about being alone, not having any friends. And I was like, man, I can't make this like a whole downer segment. So I took it easy. Um, so I hope you feel good about your content knowledge for the subjects that we talked about today because most everybody got them right, right? Most people got them right. Don't forget, we're paying for NCLEX. So now is the fun time for me because I get to announce a new winner. The new winner for this week, oh, let me, it is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes, it is future RN Peter Gay. 
from Margate, Florida. I loved her. Um, <laughs> I loved her order, and I, I just randomly picked it. Like I, did, I never know. But um, when I when I opened up her order, I saw that not only did she order uh, the DVD self study package, but she also purchased her RNU workbook. She is all in, ready um, to get started for Remar Nurse University. So she'll be receiving all of her products and go ahead and start that DVD package. Um, and then when it's time for Remar Nurse University, you'll be able to get out that workbook and begin taking your lecture notes. So I'm super excited for um, our winner for this week. Thank you guys. Thank you guys uh, for being here. Hey, Remar Nurse University, one more plug for it before I go. I can't tell you guys enough how awesome it's going to be. And I'll actually be doing a Remar Nurse University informational session. If you're in the Remar Nurse study group, um, then I will be going live from there and explaining about Remar Nurse University. We, we literally, we have like 16,000 people in our Remar Nurse study group. It's really, really cool to see. Um, and everybody in that group needs to be in Remar Nurse University. So I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. Again, if you guys have any questions, comments, check me out. Support at remarreview.com. All right. Support at remarreview.com. And I can't leave without saying our 2000 and forever, our 2000 and forever commitment. We can, we will, we must pass NCLEX. We can, we will, we must pass NCLEX. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you guys for joining me for another episode of Monday Motivation. Let's talk NCLEX. Remar Nurse family, we appreciate you. We will see you on the road, Remar Nurse University. You can sign up at remar.com backslash R-N-U. Have a great day, guys. Bye.